Hey guys, Ike here from Mike'sOutdoors.com. Today I'm here to talk to you about crossbows. I'm going to show you a bunch of different things in this video um, about these crossbows and some things you need to know about, about them before you go hunting with them. Now the actual function of these crossbows is very similar to a rifle. Load, point, aim, squeeze trigger, hopefully dead deer or dead animal. So I'm not going to talk about that. That's really the basics of it and you should probably know that by now. What we're going to talk about is loading and unloading and some of the things about these crossbows that that make it a little bit different animal to shoot than a compound bow or a rifle uh, now whether you like it or you hate it compound or crossbows are now legal in many states um, these are just now becoming legal in Missouri so they're legal to hunt with and I love an opportunity to get out and hunt something with a new weapon so I love the fact that they're legal um, and it's also a great opportunity for my son and my wife to get out during bow season and use something that's powerful and use something that's going to give them a little bit of an advantage with uh, without having to shoot a real heavyweight bow. Now the one thing I found with these crossbows is there's a kind of a myth out there that these things are going to extend your range out to, to 70, 80, maybe some people even said 100 yards. I found that not to be true. I am good with this bow out to about 40 yards, which I'm good with my compound bow out to about 40 yards. Um, I could probably squeeze off a 50 yard shot if everything was absolutely perfect. My, my compound bow, I could squeeze off a 50 yard shot if it's absolutely perfect. So it doesn't really add that much distance to it for me. Um, maybe some of you guys out there who are a little bit better shooters, maybe it will. But for me, it does not add any more distance in my compound bow. It does add power. That's the one thing to this th these crossbows that you're going to find is it does add power and it does add accuracy. I'm a lot more accurate with this crossbow at 40 and 50 yards than I am with my compound bow. Now my compound bow, I'm plenty accurate at those ranges to kill an animal, but with this one it's a lot more accurate, it's a lot more steady, and the skill set behind this is a lot less. I mean I can train my son to shoot this and he can shoot it accurately uh, and shoot it easily. So the skill set is not quite the same as it is shooting a compound bow. It's more like a rifle in that aspect. Um, there are some things about these bows that uh, you're going to want to take into consideration when you buy them. There's some things that, there's a little bit different things as far as care and as far as uh, loading and unloading these crossbows. Now, there are going to be some differences in the model that I'm shooting here and the model that you're shooting. So, there's some things we're just really going to broad stroke this, is what we're going to do. We're not really going to get into fine detail, but uh, almost all these crossbows now are going to come with some accessories. They're going to come with bolts. Um, which I, I'm not using. I'm using deer crossing bolts out of mine. Uh, they're going to come with a quiver. They're going to come with a scope, and they're going to come with a couple other odds and ends that you're going to need. That we're going to cover in this video. Um, most of those odds and ends are really useful. Now the quivers that these come with, I have yet to find a good crossbow quiver. They do the good job. A good job of holding your arrows. And that's about it. Um, they're cheap. They vibrate. These things have a ton of vibration in them. When you shoot them, you'll notice that they are really loud. So they have a ton of vibration in them. Take your quiver when you buy these things. When you get to the woods, take your quiver off. That's the simplest solution to it. It ain't going to make it any more or less accurate with or without the quiver. The only thing it's going to do really is make the bow a lot louder with the quiver on and then and um, with then the quiver being off. Let me rephrase that. Um, it's going to make it the bow a lot louder with the quiver on there, so take the quiver off. So that's how we're going to talk about that. Or that's what I would do if I were you when it comes to the quiver. They're very cheaply made and very cheaply done. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk about the arrows that come with this and go ahead and put this thing down. <clears throat> now, some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about, you guys are going to think is common sense. Well, for a lot of us it is, but for some of us that are completely new to this, um, it's not common sense. When you're shooting a crossbow, you're going to shoot bolts. You're not going to be shooting arrows. The arrows that you shoot out of your compound bow, if you shoot them out of this crossbow, they will break. They'll break in flight, they'll break right out of the end of the bow, and it can cause you serious harm, serious damage. So you're going to want to shoot crossbow bolts. These are made by deer crossing. You can see quite a bit shorter than a normal uh, arrow and they're quite a bit bigger and they are really thick. These are really heavy for such a short arrow. These are generally going to run from 20 to 22 inches. That's standard on your crossbows of today. So 
Uh, most crossbows, like I said, are going to come with bolts, so just make sure you replace your bolts uh, with the same same length bolts that they come with. Don't go buy arrows for these things. And if you go to Walmart and buy arrows that come out of these, they're going to hurt you and they're going to hurt people around you. So buy crossbow bolts. Um, I have seen people shoot these with a fixed head broadhead, but I shoot mine with a, an expandable. I use the G5, um, I, I'm not sure which ones I shoot, oh I shoot the Havoc out of, that's what I shoot, the same ones I shoot out of my compound bow. Now, when it comes to picking up an expandable for these, there are some things you're going to want to consider. This bolt is flying very, very fast, so some of those expandables out there that open really easy in flight when this is going going through the air can actually catch enough wind to force those open and if that happens this bolt will jerk off to the side so they make crossbow uh, broadheads especially especially for these arrows so if you can I recommend picking up a crossbow specific broadhead and those ones are just a little bit harder to open and they're just gonna fly out of these without the potential of them opening up and causing you to miss your shot so uh, with that said let's talk about some of the other accessories that this uh, thing is gonna come with with it, how to use them okay so these are a few of the things that my crossbow came with and these are actually not the specific kind that they came with these are actually some uh, aftermarket ones that I picked up because I used all the ones that came with my crossbow already you're going to want to wax the string on this just like you would with any compound bow. You're going to need to use some kind of good high quality wax. Um, I use just the 30-06 uh, bowstring lipstick. Uh, you can see here this is the pink lipstick here, the breast cancer awareness color, uh, stuff like that. So this is what I use, just the same way you'd use it on your compound bow. The other thing that it's going to come with, and we'll show you how to use this real quick, is rail lubricant. This is an aftermarket rail lubricant I picked up at Cabela's. It's just their house brand. And I really like a liquid. They also have like a, a wax, almost like that bowstring out there on the market, but I like the liquid. What this does is there's a ton of contact. You can see this string actually rests right on your rail. So you want a little bit of lubrication there to keep that string from rubbing on that and getting and snapping, basically. So you want to keep that uh, nice and lubed up. All you're going to do is take your rail lube, and you're just going to put a generous amount on there all the way back to the back and as you cock this it's going to pick up that rail lube and it's going to lubricate your rail and it's going to keep all that friction down so I just put a, a nice little coat of that on there just like that and you're going to want to do this about every five shots so um, pretty simple thing but not to be overlooked this will definitely prolong the life of your string and potentially keep you from uh, having this thing blow up in your face. Now, loading this thing is going to differ from person to per, from crossbow to crossbow. So, loading it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to walk through the basics of it, and that's going to be about it. If you find yourself uh, out in the woods without this little piece of equipment, you can use some paracord or your pull-up rope. I know that from experience because I've been there. So what it's going to come with, it's going to come with a length of rope and it's going to have two handles on this length of rope. At the end of the two handles is going to be these little hooks right here and a good one inside the hooks is going to have little rollers. So what you're going to do with that, and we'll have to change camera view here, is you're going to use this to cock your crossbow. If for some reason you buy a used crossbow or you buy a crossbow that does not come with this, which most of them today are going to come with this, Definitely go. I would go out definitely and pick one of these up because these crossbows. I believe this one here is 150 pounds. Um, they range in, in weight from all the way down to 80 up to uh, I believe 175. So they're a bear to pull back. They really can be tough to pull back, and this gives you a little bit more leverage and makes it a lot easier to use. If you get out and you forget this at home, you can use a piece of really stout uh, cordage, paracord good rope or something like that to cock these crossbows in the same manner and we're not going to show you that but in the same manner you can use this stuff right here so it does it does uh does not have to have this you can also use your hands but this does make it a lot easier so i'm gonna change the camera up here and show you how to use this thing okay so like i said it's going to be different on all your crossbows um, out there this is a striker offspring and most of them are going to be a little bit different, but still going to be basically the same thing. This thing right up here in the front, the stirrup, 
is to go on your foot. So you're gonna put that down on the ground. You're gonna put your stirrup on there. Now, some are gonna automatically put this thing on safety when you pull it back. Some will not. This one is one of the few things I do not like about it. Actually will not cock unless it's in the firing position. If you move this back to the, to the uh, if you try to cock it when it's in the safety position, it will not go past that safety and you can't get this cock. You have to let it up and put it in the firing position. Now, 90% of the ones that I've seen do have a safety on them that is engaged by the bolt. So that means when you pull this back, even if it's in the fire position, it will not fire until you insert a bolt and slide it back and engage the safety in there. So even though this has to be on fire when I pull it back, it still has another safety on it that keeps it from going off at this point. But just like any weapon that fires a projectile, treat it like it's a loaded weapon at all times. So to use this cocking rope, what you're gonna do is you're gonna insert one handle and one hook through the back side of your grip here. Now you're gonna take this and you're gonna hook it just like that and you're gonna take this side and hook it up just the same. This one is a little, needs just a little bit more. It's just a little bit tight. So you're gonna have it hooked up just like that. Now at this point, you're gonna grab hold of your handles and you're gonna start pulling this thing back. You hear that cock? What I do, I've heard it catch, but I, when I let it down, I make sure I let off of it very very slowly until I'm sure it's caught at this point I flip on the safety now I'm ready to go mine's loaded or I mean it's cocked my safety is on and I'm ready to load an arrow okay so this thing is now cocked and let it ready to go it has a safety inside there like we discussed that will not allow this to fire until you have a bolt inserted into it the bolts are going to come with, actually that one's got the wrong fletchings on it. It's missing the fletching. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a bolt that's going to have a cock feather on it. And on this one, the cock feather is green. So you got your two white hen feathers, you got your green cock feather. You're going to insert this into the crossbow just like that. Why? And you have to do it like that every time. And the reason you have to do it like that every time is because the knocks on this are oriented in a specific manner so that the string catches them. You can see the knocks on this one are moon shaped. Those are called moon knocks. There are also flat knocks out there, but I like the moon knock because it gives it a little bit of grip on. If you load this up without that cock vein down, one, you're gonna run into potential of actually hitting something uh, on the way out, causing clearance issues and causing that thing to fly off and not hit the animal. The other thing is it's not going to catch that that uh, knock right. So you want that oriented in a position where your cock vein is down and your moon knock, if you're using a moon knock, has the groove that's parallel with the string so it'll catch the string. At this point, all you do is slide this thing home and now this thing is ready to shoot. So after that, it pretty much shoots just like a gun. You got your scope up here or your iron sights or whatever you have. You have your trigger down here, you have your safety. Once you have that ready to go, you get an animal in front of you, flip off the safety, and rock and roll. So, say you go out and you do not have an animal come in front of you and present you with an opportunity to shoot. At this point, what you're going to want to do is unload this thing. This is just like a muzzle loader. You cannot unload it without firing it. They make several different things. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this bolt out just to keep it off safety. Uh, they make a couple different things to unload this. They make small little targets to unload it or they actually make decocking arrows which are just solid fiberglass and they have a blunt point on the end of them. I have both. I have a small target that I use and I also have the decocking arrow but I can't find a decocking arrow. So I use this hips target right here. This is the hips 12 pack archery target compound bow crossbows is good for everything. It's a small 12 by 12 target um, and it works great for doing this. I can take it with me in the back of the truck, doesn't take up a lot of space. When I get there and I, I don't kill something with my crossbow or don't fire it, I can take it and I can toss it out there a yard or two and I can, I can shoot my arrow into this and my crossbow is safe to transport. I won't put my crossbow uh, into my truck when it's still loaded. So um, one of these is a great investment or like I said, one of those arrows that actually uh, decocks 
is made for decocking and you can shoot in the ground. I'm gonna go ahead and unload this thing real quick. Not with that one, because that one doesn't have a field point on it. We talk about prepared. Uh, this one doesn't have a vein on it, but that's better than nothing. So I've got my target literally right there. I'm just gonna pull this up, flip the safety off, and just like that, it's unloaded. So those are the basics of shooting and hunting with a crossbow. Um, like I said, like it or hate it, they're part of the law now in a lot of states and it's legal to use these things. I love them. Because one, it gives me another opportunity to go out with something and shoot a whitetail with it or shoot a hog with it. They're great weapons, they're effective, and they're for people like my son, people like my wife, who don't have the strength to go out and pull even a 50 pound bow. You know, my son's eight. So he can hunt now during archery season and he can use a crossbow. So it's a fantastic way to get those kind of people out there uh, that don't have the strength or to get the people out there who don't have the time or the skill with a compound bow and, and to get them out in the woods. So this is a basic look at how to use this crossbow and, and some of the kind of finer things that, that you need to know about it and run down on that. But um, this is my offspring and I'm going to be using this this year. Uh, this is the first year it's legal in Missouri and I'm going to be taking this thing out. I'm really excited on opening day. I'm going to have this in the woods with me. It's going to be my first year of legally being able to hunt with a crossbow uh, during archery season. I have used this a couple times during rifle season, but I haven't been able to harvest an animal with it yet. So this year I've got full archery season to try to harvest an animal with my crossbow and I am really excited about it. Uh, one other thing that I want to talk to you about real quick is it does have bolts here that you can back off the poundage on these, but these bolts really aren't meant to be tampered with. So I, once you put these on here, the manufacturer is probably going to suggest that you run these all the way down. These bolts are to hold the limb in place. Unlike on a compound bow, they're not a meant, they're not really meant to adjust the poundage on the bow. So uh, I really suggest you do not mess with the limb bolts or the limb pocket bolts on these uh, on these crossbows. The other thing is really make sure your strings are in good shape. Make sure that they are uh, not in bad condition and not coming apart. Because one of these blowing up in your face is going to be a lot more devastating than a compound bow blowing up in your face. So. Uh, just a couple words of precaution on uh, these compound bows and kind of some things to look out for. So I hope you like this video and like I said, if you're a crossbow hunter, good luck to you. I'm excited, super excited about getting out and getting an opportunity to kill a whitetail with my crossbow this year. So be sure to like, subscribe, and share these videos. Be sure to check us out on Facebook under Ike's Outdoors and be sure to visit the website, ikesoutdoors.com. Appreciate you guys watching.